The piece is called 1-1-2017 and it catalogues one day of gun violence in the United States of America. 62 incidents of gun violence that happened in 55 different places across the country that resulted in the deaths of 73 different people from ages one to about 65. My name is Melissa Cameron. I am an artist jeweler. I live in Seattle at the moment. I have done for the last six and a half years, but I am originally from Australia. I'm a jeweler metalsmith. I enjoy working with metals, but uh, they don't often have the kind of backstory that I'm after. So I enjoy working with recycled materials as well. They have a history and a narrative that I can co-opt into service in my works. And I find that the collaboration between me and the material is richer when I work that way. I make works that are for the human body, that are worn by the human body, that reflect on the human body, that are made from domestic objects, often designed over a long period of time for use by the human body. They've evolved to be with the human body. Jewellery is one of the oldest forms of artwork and this canvas here or here, wherever it is, is the one that is most available to everyone. Everyone has a body. Not everyone goes into a gallery. That inlet, I think, is really important because that means that we can, on a level that I find very important, empathise with each other and create community with each other. And the kind of work that I make can use that as both the philosophical canvas as well as a literal canvas. 1-1-2017 one, one, is made out of 73 containers that came from the 73 places or thereabouts where people were killed. Each of the pieces was cut into the shape of the gun that killed the person who was in that place. These containers are stand-ins for the bodies that were lost. The idea of the container as a body was something that actually came to me as my father was dying because we were looking after this container of him that was no longer him. Up until the last second, we pay homage to that external idea of that person, even when that person is lost. And so the idea that each of these people was lost, each of these containers was now rendered completely destroyed because a container is meant to hold something. And once it's got a hole in it, it's not a container. I was formerly an interior architect, so I do all of my drawings in AutoCAD and a lot of my idea generation sort of happens in that space. I made the transition towards jewellery and becoming an artist after I saw a retrospective of a local artist called Howard Taylor. And that moment was very important to me because I didn't think people from my town could make art. Seeing that show was kind of fundamental to my understanding that people from my neighbourhood could have a retrospective. It's a big deal. I walk around with my sensitivity as my guide. And I think that's really what artists do. They're, they're sensitive to light, they're sensitive to colour, and so then they create works that show off that sensitivity. My sensitivity is to community and to people and so I want to be able to make works that reflect that. 1-1-2017 one, one, was in response to the 58 deaths that happened in Las Vegas last year. Like most of the other really big multiple killings, and that obviously was the biggest in the United States history of colonization anyway. There's been other massacres, obviously. It received a huge amount of news coverage and in some respects that saddens me because every single one of the 73 deaths that happened on January 1st is just as much of a tragedy and doesn't receive any of the news coverage. There was a photography component to this project. It was important that these works were worn by people to have a, a lasting record of what that many deaths look like. 
rallying that community together was a, a great way to remind each of us that there is support and that perhaps change is possible. I have no illusions that a lot of people who disagree with me are going to turn up to this show and suddenly change their minds. But I think if we build our own community and if we help each other, then we can, we can create something bigger than ourselves. Objects tell our story and history has that habit of being written by the victors, whereas craft is written by a bunch of different people with a bunch of different abilities, a bunch of different bodies and faces, and these objects are gonna outlive all of us. That kind of continuity of story and history can only really be found in objects that are crafted, and we need that. We need that as part of our history as much as we need any other written or verbal history. That tells us where we've been, and hopefully in the future when all of this changes, it will remind us not to go back.